Hey, my good friend, Sam Haymart with Test Driven TV. Today, we're high atop the skyline of downtown Phoenix, Arizona, and we are talking about the 2024 Mercedes-Benz GLS 580, nearly the top of the rung in the Mercedes-Benz SUV lineup. So we're gonna have a good look at it inside and out. We're gonna take it for a drive, and then I'm gonna tell you what I really think. Now, I said this is nearly the top of the line of the Mercedes-Benz SUV lineup. There is more money to spend here, trust me. If you go up into the G-Wagon or even if you go up to the AMG version of this, you can spend a lot more than the $128,000 and some change that the one that we have here cost. Now, the GLS 580 starts out at about $112,000. This one's got a lot of options on it. And as we go through the video, you'll see those graphics come across your screen as we sort of talk about some of those and we see them. First one I want to point out is the color. This is Alpine Gray. Now, I always sort of chuckle when I see Mercedes-Benz and their option pricing on colors because this is gray, nearly $2,000 for an option. It's, it's not costing that much more to make the paint. It's a popularity fee, and I don't blame them. I've had a lot of compliments on this color as I've driven this vehicle around this week. It's got the 23-inch wheels, which are optional on this, and they really fill the wheel wells. And for 2024, this did get some slight styling of updates and LED headlights. The information tells me 112 LED elements per headlight. That is a lot of different lighting and they work very well at night. Now this is a pretty good size SUV, 205 inches in length and about 77 inches wide, not including the mirrors. And they've really made this vehicle look sporting, athletic, and we just tested the Land Rover Defender last week, which is very masculine, very butch. This is a vehicle that I think leans a little bit more family-like, a little bit more like you're gonna park it in this parking garage and work in that high rise right behind me. A little bit more of a briefcase instead of a backpack. Down on the bottom, this has running boards, which are nicely styled and integrated. Up on the top, standard black roof rails. And this does, of course, have the large panoramic roof. Out at the back, a nicely integrated spoiler at the rear hatch, LED taillights all the way across. I really like the way they've designed this. It gives that rear three quarter view a very sort of athletic haunch down stance. Of course, this does have a power opening rear hatch. You'd expect that. Down the lower bumper, some nice exhaust finishers. Although I will point out, as we can see in close there, these are not like real exhaust tips. Not my favorite way of doing a design, but they do look pretty nice, at least from a distance. In the center is a trailer hitch receiver, which is an option on this, oddly enough. Under the hood, because we're in the GLS 580, this does have the 4-liter twin turbocharged V8. This has a mild hybrid system that, with the horsepower of 510 horsepower, this gets an extra 21 horsepower from the integrated starter generator and that enables this to really let the power loose through its nine-speed automatic transmission and the all-wheel drive system. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go for a drive here in a few minutes. The interior of the GLS 580 is very familiar if you've been in any contemporary Mercedes-Benz, particularly their medium to large size SUVs. The dash is almost identical in all of them, and it's a beautiful design in my opinion. It's very high tech. The quality of all the switch gear and the materials and the structural items is exquisite. Here we have a fully wrapped dash and door panels with MB Techs, very nicely stitched and crafted. This has the wood in it, which is a natural open pore grain type of wood that has a nice texture on it. We have Napa leather throughout. The console has a nice design with grab handles here that's very sporting. I like it. The dash on this is Mercedes-Benz sort of a corporate 12.3 inch dual screen cockpit layout. The head of the driver is a fully customizable instrument cluster, which you can tune to a number of different styles and graphic layouts. You can also choose all of the information that's on it, you, almost limitless. And then over to the right is the MBUX digital infotainment control center where all of the wonderful things we'll talk about in a few minutes when we get to that exist. Below that, four large vents, 
not round like a lot of the classic Mercedes-Benz designs of late. These are nice and square. And you might notice as you see the photos of the interior, the video throughout, this has ambient lighting virtually everywhere across the dash, the console, and even in the rear passenger compartment. And you can tune that to an infinite array of different color combinations. It can even cycle to different colors if you like that as well. Down below are hard controls for the climate control system. And then the console has this nice sort of roll top wood here and you can open that up to show you cup holders down below a nice cubby for your phone with a wireless charger there are of course usb ports down there and then back behind this there is a trackpad for the infotainment system there are buttons for a number of the controls like the suspension here a clamshell opening compartment now that's not the largest compartment for a vehicle of this size it's a little bit larger than a square tissue box and maybe you can also put sunglasses in there but that's about the size of it the seats that i'm sitting in are extremely comfortable like most mercedes-benz vehicles the controls are on the door they are heated they're ventilated and oddly enough i didn't see an option line item that's standard in this particular vehicle and there are memory settings here for the driver and as well as the passenger and that extends to the rear as well heated seats back there and they have their own controls for their power seats which we'll talk about i guess right now whether you're sitting in the front or the back you're going to be comfortable because as i was talking about you have a lot of the same creature comforts back here as the front row does their heated seats their power seats back here adjustable just the same way the front ones are and for 2024, I'm sitting in captain's chairs here, you might notice, and they're pretty comfortable as well. Because they're adjustable and I can really set them the way I want them, uh, there are just a number of ways to get where you want to go. The controls back here for the HVAC are here. You can get an option package, which really expands that with the tablet and gives the rear seat passengers a lot of the same options as those sitting in the front to sort of control things. So if you have a mother-in-law that really likes to have a little bit of an input, that's a way to go there. Amenities back here include things like cup holders, of course, vents down on the lower console. There are vents on the side of the door posts. And of course, there are charging ports back here for everybody. Getting into the third row, quite easy as you can see. And the third row is pretty sizable for a vehicle like this. It's not just for kids back there. And when we get to the cargo compartment, one of the nice things is that all of these seats, the third row and the second row, can be put down with buttons back there. You don't have to open the doors and wrestle with the seats or do any of that. You can stand at the back. And I went to Costco this weekend and, and did a big, huge, month-long shopping expedition and was able to, with the cart standing next to me, put all of these seats down at the push of a button and really fill the space quite nicely. And then there is a lot of space back there too. You will not find a spare tire here, unfortunately. Uh, a little disappointed there. A fix a flat kit is what you get. And in an SUV, I always, I really look for that because uh, it's important. If you're out in the middle of nowhere and you cut a tire open on a rock or something like that, maybe there's no cell service. If you don't have a tire to put on, uh, you're going to be taking a walk probably and nobody wants to do that so this is an interior i'm very very happy with as i've talked about it's all about the design the craftsmanship and the quality of all the controls here it's just uh it really hardly gets better than this at any price this interior gets five out of five stars the infotainment system here is one that if you watch my reviews on Mercedes-Benz before, you might just fast forward through because I don't have very much negative to say about it. It is fully featured. It has some of the best graphics you're going to find anywhere. The best part about it, though, is you can control it any number of ways. There is a trackpad down here that you can use to navigate around on the screen. You can navigate with your fingers on the screen as a touch screen, and there are also touch sensitive controls on the steering wheel to control it from there. So there are three different places in which you can control all of the different menus and navigating around. Plus, there are a few quick switches down here on the hard controls that can jump you to certain menus. 
particularly the climate because the expanded climate controls can be found here while the basics are down here. So you can really get into the climate controls and individually set things for the second row, the third row, and so forth. And while there are some controls available back there in those rows, it's nice to be able to get really detailed like that. We had a passenger with us on one of our days with the vehicle and they weren't quite able to figure out how to get things done back there. So we were able to set what they wanted from here. It was a nice, easy way to go. But this is a system that is fully featured. There's voice activated connected services, which of, of course, like many vehicles now are, you know, they're subscription based, but a lot of what's here is standard and does not require the subscription. This has the Burmester sound system, which is a pretty expensive option, I gotta tell you. It is one of the most expensive audio options I have seen of late in a modern vehicle. But the good news is it sounds absolutely great. One of the best sounding systems you're going to find, multiple speakers throughout. It's just quality. And so when you get into this price range, I think when we're well over $100,000, I do find it interesting that they're tacking on an additional $4,500 for an upgraded audio system. But uh, in the all-in packaging, it fits, it works well, and I like it. So I'm not really going to complain about the price on it. This is a system that with all of its bells and whistles, its ease of use, and just the delight that is using it, it gets five out of five stars. All right, my friends, finally time to take a drive. And so one of the things I always like to do right out the gate is sort of get a feel for the power. So, woo! Ah, listen to that. And 70, oh my goodness. <laughs> I shouldn't be doing that in town. So one of the wonderful things about this particular vehicle is it still has a good old fashioned V8 under the hood. But that's not exactly true. It's not really old fashioned at all. It's a twin turbocharged four liter V8 and it also has a mild hybrid system. With that mild hybrid system, the auto start stop functionality is very seamless because it's got a very strong motor that's between the engine and the transmission. It's not belt driven like some. It's a very refined system with the nine speed automatic transmission and the various different drive modes. This thing just has a nice level of refinement and power. You can step on it, listen to that. Hmm. Yes, you don't get that with a V6 found in some of the competitors. Now, obviously, if you don't need all of this horsepower, there are other options. You can get the inline six and the GLS 450. That's a wonderful choice. That is a smooth, refined inline six engine. It's got plenty of power, but in my ethos, if you're going to spend the money and go all the way up into something like this, get the V8. It's really going to make you smile if V8s make you smile. So driving around town, it's just a nice, smooth, refined experience. Now, fuel economy, hmm, it's a V8. The EPA rates it at 14 miles per gallon city, 20 miles per gallon highway, and 16 miles per gallon combined. Hybrid or no hybrid. Imagine what it would be without that. And so in my week with it, I've seen about 15, 16, mostly driving in the city. And so, yeah, it's a thirsty beast, but chances are if you're spending 130K, give or take, for a big luxury SUV, you're not pining over gas prices. That's the operating theory here. If that is the case, there are other options. They even have a very nice electric SUV if that's the person that you are. And I highly recommend it. I've tested it as well. One of the things that's important to point out is that this also has a very good towing capacity with this powertrain, 7,700 pounds, which really makes that extra expense for the trailer hitch worth it in a lot of ways. So this is a powertrain that I'm very happy with. It's refined, it's quiet, it works exceptionally well. It's one of the best mild hybrids on the market with this 48 volt system. Uh, it just works. And I've tested it in a number of other vehicles. Always makes me smile. It gets five out of five stars. Now to the chassis. The 48 volt hybrid system also powers the Airmatic suspension that this has. This has a fully independent suspension, front and rear, and multi-link, of course. So it's got all of the high-tech stuff. It's got big brakes on this one, these big, huge tires and wheels. So it's got a lot of grip around town, on a back road, however you may drive. But going around corners, curves, 
and over bumpy streets around your town, this air suspension has a lot of features and a lot of ways to really make your life nice. It reads the road ahead of you so that it can automatically adjust both the spring and damping rates simultaneously, individually, so that this is constantly anticipating what's coming at it. And so because of that, this has a very stable ride. And so if you're going through a neighborhood with potholes, speed bumps, um, in my neighborhood, I have those speed humps, which are those undulations that want to slow you down. This can automatically accommodate for those as you're going over those, not reacting to them. And so it doesn't make them disappear, but it makes you really feel like the car is looking out for you. I like that. I really like that. So uh, it's well done in that way. And one thing I will say, though, is this has a traditional Mercedes-Benz feel. And that is to say that if you're familiar with the brand, and you've driven more than one of them, they have a little bit of a, I want to say a waddle. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. Some people don't like it, but when you go over bumps and speed bumps and road irregularities, it kind of, you have the side to side kind of a little bit of a floating action. And that's always been something that Mercedes Benz as I've driven, no matter how sporting or how luxury, they've always just kind of had that characteristic. And at first I thought maybe it was an oversight when I was first starting in this business, but I've come to know it's just something they tune in to how these drive. And over time, it's sort of gotten a charm to it. So this has that. The other thing this does have on maybe the not so positive side relative to the ride and drive is that because of these very large wheels and low profile tires, no matter how good this air suspension is at absorbing and anticipating the rough stuff, you do get a little bit of harshness that comes through when you hit some of the rougher spots, speed bumps, potholes, things like that. Out on the highway, especially when you dial the drive mode up, this is very stable. It's very quiet. Oh, I just felt the air suspension sort of adjust for that. Our 70 mile an hour decibel test, this came in at 56.5 decibels, which is very quiet. And this also has the acoustic package, which is one of those options. <laughs> so it's very quiet. But the nice thing is, is some of the adjustments and floating and softness that you get around town, like where we're at right now, you lose that when you get up to highway speeds and this feels solid like a brick. So this is a chassis that has a lot of features and benefits, a lot of refinement, a lot of goodness, but it still has some of the Mercedes-Benz-isms that maybe a driving purist might not like. This chassis gets four out of five stars. All right, so we've had a good look at it inside now. We've taken it for a drive. You've heard a lot of what I've had to say about this. And so the last conversation is, is it competitive? Is it worth the money? Well, my caveat on all vehicles like this is this is a luxury vehicle. It's not a necessity, right? If you needed a three row vehicle that you had to have enough room to carry your family in, but you only had a little bit to spend, this is probably not the one that you would get, right? You buy this because you want it. And Mercedes Benz is a brand that has a large following of people that love it for what it is. And I will tell you that as a auto reviewer for now close to 20 years and a past owner of a Mercedes-Benz, I do have a bit of a, an affinity for what the brand's about. And I'll tell you that this is all Mercedes-Benz. It looks like one, it smells like one, and it drives like one. It has the DNA through and through. So if you're a Mercedes-Benz owner or loyalist, you're going to probably love this because it's not going way off the tracks from what you're used to. It's got quality. It's got luxury. It's got the style. It makes a point when you pull up to the curb. Now, the price, $128,800 and some change. Well, <laughs> that's a lot of money, right? And uh, the thing about Mercedes-Benz and most of the German brands is, is they really hit you with the options pricing. And you saw a lot of that going across your screen. And so when it comes to value, not so much. But chances are, if you're buying this, you're buying it because you want it, you love it, and you don't care, right? But if you're looking at comparing this to a lot of other vehicles out there, it, it starts looking like not the best value on the spreadsheet when, when you talk about money for features. Warranty on this, four years, 50,000 miles, not the longest in the business. And believe me, if you buy this vehicle to keep it, you want the extended warranty. Um, I'm sort of, my recommendation for vehicles like this is you lease it. 
because there's the old saying, there's, there's nothing more expensive than an old Mercedes Benz. And I mean that with love, okay? So I'm not banging on the vehicle, but if you've owned one, you know what I'm talking about. So that said, I put value here at four out of five stars, giving all of the content and the pricing and the what it's like to live with stuff. And so when you put that in with everything we've already talked about, we're at four and a half stars to the review. Very good, that's a great score. So uh, there you go, the Mercedes-Benz GLS 580. I like it, I do. So if you like what we do here, you can see our latest video right there. Better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel right down there. Either way, stay tuned.